Okay, so let's dive into some assemblies. Like, what is an assembly? An assembly is, you know, the, the, the drywall on both sides, the studs, the, the whole package to make that wall, right? And a lot of people, I've asked multiple, been asked multiple times um, by homeowners, by contractors, and they say, can I just put one layer of drywall on one side and that will give me my one hour? And I always tell them, I've never seen an assembly that's been approved that has uh, drywall on one side. To meet the rating, you have to have it on both sides. So if you are putting in a pole barn and that pole barn is three feet off the property line, you would have to put drywall or some type of rated material on the outside and a layer on the inside, then put your siding on. And as an inspector, we want to see that before you cover it, right? We want to see that, that the drywall goes from all the way from the ground, all the way to the roof, side to side. It's been fire taped and the siding has been put on. It means that it, it, that particular side has been inspected. It's rated. Then you go to the inside and you finish out the drywall across there. Um, that would give you your full assembly. So, just as a heads up, usually you can't get away with just one layer of drywall on one side. It's got to be on both sides to meet that requirement. So how do we, how do they come up with this, um, these assemblies? Well, they test them. What they do is they call them their UL numbers. And so these UL numbers, they're tested by, um, a third party gypsum testing agency. And they give each of these different assemblies and there's hundreds of different assemblies, steel studs, concrete floors, um, insulation, no insulation, uh, rock wool, no rock wool, um, two by 10 floors versus TGI floor systems, um, two by six walls, two by four walls. I mean, it goes on and on. Uh, I have a couple UL listings that I pulled up. And I'm just going to show them to you so you have an idea kind of what we look for as an inspector out on site. Um, if you get into a situation where you have a rated wall, it's like, well, what's your UL listing? What's your, what, what assembly have you chose to meet the one hour or two hour requirement that you might have? Which in residential, I very rarely have ever seen anything that requires two hours. It's always just a one hour break. Uh, nothing crazy. But let's look right here. So here's UL U305. So as a one hour rating, it's a four and three quarter inch system thickness. And essentially it's five eighths thick gypsum board, two by four stud walls at 16 inches on center and five eighths inch thick gypsum board again. So there's your, that's your assembly. That's your firewall in its complete state. Drywall, studs, drywall. And then you hop down here and this is just um, this one says these are load bearing too, by the way, but interior partitions, load bearing. And here again, it's same thing, but all they did was add insulation. So you can have a rated wall that does or does not have insulation in it. And if, if I was an inspector, I'd say, well, you know, what's your UL listing? Like, what would you come up with? You know, it's like, oh, well, I came up with this. I have a one hour rating. I'm putting five eights on both sides of my wall. I've got a two by four stud wall. I'm good to go. We sign it off. It's clean. It goes all the way top and bottom, side to side. You're good to go. Okay, so let's look at this assembly. So this is an assembly that where I work, um, the jurisdiction, the city I work for, when someone's doing a garage or something like that, they will hand out this particular detail so that a homeowner has a clear understanding of what's required for their rated wall because maybe they're putting in a garage right next to the property line their neighbor's okay with it and so here's the requirement so here you can see right here it's 5 8 type x gypsum wall board so that's on the inside okay then they've got type x gypsum sheathing right here again so they've got it on the soffit so they're protecting that projection like we read about earlier you protect your projection and then they also have the next layer right here so and it says structural sheathing as required so you may put up uh, maybe an osb or a plywood sheathing and then put your drywall up and then put your siding up so here it just says siding is the last thing to go up as an inspector i'm going to want to see this layer before you cover it i'm going to want to know that it's that's fire taped 
and that it's clean and that it's good to go. So this is a big component that, that I tell homeowners to save a little bit on some of the mayhem of rated assemblies. And that's this alternative location of drywall or two by blocking if no ceiling finished is provided. A lot of times you don't finish the ceiling in your garage. Maybe it's just open, maybe you've added storage up there. It's just a garage, right? You just left it open. Well, to get by the requirement of having to drywall the ceiling, you can put blocking right here, which is just like a, take a two by six, a two by eight, a two by four, whatever it takes to meet the height between this top plate and your roof sheeting. You cut the board to angle so it's a clean, tight fit, and you set it between each truss as you go down the line and you nail it off. And then you have complete, there's no gaps, no holes. It's been blocked all the way through with a two by material. Or you could drywall up between each truss. But when you drywall up between each truss, you're cutting a whole bunch of pieces. You might have to fire call gaps. If you just put the blocking in, you're good to go. So a lot of times what we do is we just tell people, well, just put your drywall up on both sides, block it, and you're good to go. So that would be like that would be like a main assembly for any type of rated assembly on a accessory structure. So there are all types of different materials out there nowadays. I talked a lot about drywall. I haven't talked a lot about fire taping and what that means, but there are just other um, options out there as well. And I want to make sure to show those to you. So you can have fire rated plywood. Maybe you on your shop, on your garage, you don't want to put up drywall. You're already going to put plywood up. Well, maybe pay a little extra and you get treated plywood, right? So this is like a rated plywood. It's been dipped or soaked into some type of material that helps, uh, you know, give it some type of fire barrier to it. And, you know, I would definitely check with your inspector before you do it, but this could be another alternative. Maybe uh, inside your garage, you want to put up plywood anyways because you're going to put a whole bunch of tools and, and stuff to hang tools. Well, you can just put this up and you already have your backing there. So that might save you down the road. So this is LP flame block. So this is actually OSB, which would be like this material right here that I have on my wall right here. Just OSB and it's been, it's been like painted with a some type of fire rated material and i'm starting to see this a lot now is um big contractors are putting this up instead of drywall because if you have a rated wall that requires an exterior rating and you're putting up drywall say it's in the middle of rainy season or in the middle of winter and the drywall's getting all wet and it's just a pain to put up they're putting this up and it's meeting the requirement for the sheeting and the and the fire rating all at once. As long as it's installed per the manufacturer's install instructions, you're good to go. So here I is like a, you know, some type of like an apartment building or something where they've actually used this as their sheeting and it meets that one hour rating. Maybe you're doing a stick built garage and you don't want to drywall the outside. You're going to put this up and then get side right over it after it's done and approved. It's just another option that's out there. So then let's, what about fire taping? So here's like kind of a picture of a garage. We talked about garage separation. So you can see you can use half inch here, right? So this would be your 20 minute door or your solid wood core door or your solid steel door, right? It's providing you that protection. It's got self-closing hinges on it and they fire tape. So fire taping is literally just that first coat of mud with the tape right? It's that, it's sealing that gap, that, that joint and making it kind of a clean, no gap wall, right? There's no holes or penetrations in it. You might have a wire popping out. You might have maybe a garage door opener or something like that. You could put a little bit of fire caulk in there and just seals everything up. Um, but this would be kind of an example of a garage that has that separation. If there was living space above here, well, then you would want five eighths inch drywall up there, right? So, you know, outlets, again, not the end of the world. You can just seal maybe the where the wire goes through the box. And you can put a little fire caulk in there. 
I don't, as an inspector, I've never really worried about uh, garage openings that little itty bitty projections like that, uh, holes, um, penetrations. I don't really worry about an outlet or maybe, maybe you have a hot, cold hose bib. You know, if it's tight and sealed and it's installed and there's not a huge hole there, I don't really worry about it. But you could actually use rated paint. They have rated paint out there now, and I've seen homeowners use it. The only kicker to it is, is your inspector might require a third party inspector to come out, which is just additional funds because rated paint costs extra money. Uh, it's pretty expensive for a five gallon jug. And then when it's applied, an inspector has to come out um, that has like the, the uh, thickness rating tool to able to verify that you put enough on to equal the rating that's required. And so it can be like a mill, like in the little millimeters, right? And it gets down to just really, 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 really small thickness, but it has to be tested and it has to be written up on a report that it met the requirement. That is an option. I don't see it very often in a residence, but if you forgot to put in your rated wall, um, I had this um, garage that um, some people were turning into an ADU, an accessory dwelling unit. So it's now becoming a living space. It's an existing garage. It's already within five feet of the property line. That's just how it was built back in the day. But now it's a living space. So it has to be protected. Well, they didn't read through their approved plans all the way. And they didn't quite understand that you needed to have that rating on both sides. They thought, oh, well, if we just put drywall up on the inside that were okay. And through communications, they didn't quite understand what I was looking for. And we show up at final and I'm like, Hey, I, I thought you guys were putting drywall here on the outside wall and you didn't do that. Like, what are we going to do? Well, they could have put drywall on the outside and then put siding on. Or what they chose to do was, is they chose to put up fire paint, have it third party tested. And then they just went painted over that again with whatever color they wanted. And they were good to go. So another option out there if you need it. But uh, yeah, hopefully this helps as far as ratings are concerned. Uh, you know, in my opinion, just try to stay over five feet off your property line. And you won't have any problems. But um, if you do get into that, it's not the end of the world. It's just some added costs and some drywall and a couple extra inspections. So, alrighty, 